Hello everyone, and welcome back to the New York Jets franchise here on Madden 20. My name is Football Fan Forever, and it's time for the year one off season. I always look forward to off seasons, but especially when your team goes one and fifteen, and you're the number one overall pick. There's a limitless amount of possibilities going into an off season like this one to add talent at every area of the roster. Going into this offseason, one of my big goals, one of my main goals, was to revamp the offensive line. We didn't get good play from hardly anyone last year, so it'll be important to see who, not only like what we can bring in terms of talent, but how their specific skill set fits into the vision I have for this offense. Obviously, we're changing playbooks. We're moving away from Adam Gase's. We've got an offseason to implement an entirely new playbook, both on offense and defense. So while we will be sticking with some of the same concepts, we'll still be running a 3-4 on defense. Our offensive attack should better be able to take advantage of our players' skill sets. So here we go into the offseason. It looks like the Houston Texans beat the Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Congratulations to Houston. You win your first Super Bowl title in Super Bowl 54. Looks like they got it done both through the air on the and on the ground as one touchdown in each quarter is enough to put away the Dallas Cowboys who just got going too a little too late. I think it's a few years before the Jets are in Super Bowl contention here, but three touchdown passes from Deshaun Watson. He had a great game. On the retirements, Drew Brees, Ted Ginn, uh, Jonathan Joseph, Andrew Whitworth, Jason Witten retired, Adrian Peterson, Joe Flacco retired, as did Frank Gore. I was expecting Gore to retire. I didn't know that Flacco was considering retirement. He was only 35, and a lot of quarterbacks will go longer than that. But he decided to hang him up, so now we have both a quarter need at quarterback, a backup quarterback, and backup running back. So... As we're approaching the offseason, this is what the roster looks like. This does not take into account expiring contracts. So, yeah, that offensive line just needs a lot of work. There's very few cornerstones to build around there. The defensive side of the ball also needs an infusion of talent. I'm particularly looking at targeting the front seven. Because outside of Quinian Williams and C.J. Mosley, we didn't have a lot of production from the other members of this defense. Regression. I was worried about this because we've got several older players, but Henry Anderson only lost four attribute points. Daniel Brown went down seven. Desir only went down 11. Chris Hogan got hammered. He lost 40 points and went down several overall, but he's not a big part of our offense, so that's not a big deal. Our expiring contract situation is actually pretty good. No one over a 72 overall has got an expiring contract, so I wasn't too interested in bringing most of these players back. Cameron Clark, I lowballed him to see if he would come back on a team-friendly contract, but he decides to test. It's not a big deal. Frankie Louvu didn't really fit what I had in mind for an archetype of a player that I want on the outside in this offense. I took a long look at Josh Rosen. I thought he played decent. But we're not really looking for a backup quarterback at this point. We're trying to find a starter. So with that in mind, I decided not to make an offer to Josh Rosen. It may have been a mistake, but decided to see who else is out in free agency. Speaking of free agent, Brian Winters, our right guard, he was overpriced, so we released him to get a little bit more cap room going into free agency. And wow, what a class. Chris Jones headlines this one, along with Kareem Hunt, Eric Armstead, and Austin Eckler. So we have some money to spend. We got 53 mil, which isn't a whole lot, but we're in better places than some teams. Earl Thomas might be someone we take a look at. But after those first high name free agents, there wasn't a whole lot to pick from. Brett Rippian's the best quarterback, and while he'd be a good backup, I'm, again, I'm not sure I'm looking for a backup quarterback. And the actual numbers here are worse than Donald's. As for wide receiver, I wanted to bring in a wide receiver three. And again, there weren't a whole lot that jumped off the page. But someone like Kaderil Hodge 
really stood out to me. He's a physical wide receiver. He's got excellent hands. The route running is okay. He's got good speed and excellent jumping ability. So I decided to offer him a contract and see if he'd bite to try and play on the outside in our system. So $20 million over three years for the 25-year-old. And that is the only offer on his sheet so far. The offensive line was not looking good, and unfortunately the free agent market was pretty underwhelming as well. Termaine Ankrum Jr., however, had a pass protector skill set. I wanted to try and move Mackie Becton inside, so bringing in someone like Ankrum, to, who's more of a pure pass blocker, uh, might be a move that flies under the radar. Similar at left guard, Colton Mikovitz was the best option there. He's not much better than Alex Lewis, um, but he's got decent run block power and good lead blocking, and he's pretty strong, so I decided to offer him a contract as well. Um, this offer a little, little bit low, but still the only interest he's getting at this point. On the defensive side of the ball, Eric Armstead and Chris Jones are the top two guys I was taking a look at. Obviously, Armstead might fit a little bit better in our 3-4 scheme as a left end opposite Quinian Williams. But Chris Jones is Chris Jones. He's the best player available in this free agent period, and he just brings another level to the defense. So I went back and forth trying to offer. I couldn't get both, so I decided to try and offer to one or the other. So $65 million over four years for Chris Jones isn't even the same ballpark of what he's commanding. So I tried increasing the offer to see if that would help. A little closer to $70 million. Make it 85, 86 million, and we're still not in the same league as the Chargers. So went over to Eric Armstead next and see what he would command. And I decided to make him a six, uh, five-year deal, and that ends up being good enough for first. So we drop a bunch of money on Eric Armstead. We'll see if he signs, and then start taking a look at replacing Willie Henry. We obviously can't bring in Chris Jones, but Marlon Davidson is a pretty good option. I like his skill set here a lot. He can rush a passer. He can stop the run. So it might be someone we bring in off the bench in passing down situations. In the secondary, Mackenzie Alexander and Levi Wallace were the top two options. I decided to offer to Wallace because he's younger and is a little bit faster. So trying to patch up a secondary that was the worst in the league last year. Wallace isn't a game-changing player, but he's still one of our better corners. And we needed a kicker, so made an offer to Greg the Leg. He's got 97 kick power, which is really going to help extend the range at which we can kick field goals. So here's our offers after the first round, or going into the first round of negotiations. We're in most cases, the only person offering to these guys. So even though our bids might be a little bit low, we also have a good chance of signing them. So let's see what happens after the first week of free agency. Who will win the Eric Armstead sweepstakes? So Greg the Leg joins our team, and Eric Armstead has accepted his contract with us along with Kadero Hodge. I was so excited with those signings. They're going to be immediate impact players for us. And it looks like the rest of the players I'm targeting have not been offered money by any other teams. So I increase a couple of bids a little bit, but then turn my attention towards finding a trade partner for Avery Williamson. There's plenty of interest in him, but he is getting older, and I didn't think he fit our scheme super well. He's a liability in pass coverage. So I end up making an offer to the Giants, and they send over a third and a seventh this year to get a middle linebacker and shore up their run defense. Then it was time to look at combine grades. There were a lot of really good performances in this combine. Madison Hakiba, the consensus number one quarterback in this draft class, he had a combine that was solid if unspectacular. He ran a 4.82 and didn't raise any red flags with his athleticism. Speaking of athleticism, Mash Johnson from Arizona, he's just 20 years old, and he was turning heads. It seemed like everything he did at the Combine was elite. 
He was top five in everything except for his jump, which means that he's going to be a monster for someone. James Delgado, who is another one of my favorite prospects, had a pretty solid combine himself. He gets off the ball really quickly, and he's pretty strong for a left outside linebacker as well. And how about LaMarcus Albert? He's a quarterback whose accuracy is unknown, but he ran a 4-2-9. That was the fastest 40-yard dash time in this draft class. And the other quarterbacks I was looking at later on in the draft didn't come close. Brendan Jones ran a 5-3-8. Connor Price didn't do much better. Antoine Griffin had an excellent combine as well if we want to go secondary, but... Uh, with the signing of Levi Wallace, who immediately gets an upgrade, I didn't think that was super important. Marlon Davidson also signs, so just a couple more players left with offers out there. Uh, Mikovits, uh, the left guard, and Tremaine Ankrum, the left tackle. One more chance for them to sign, and they do. So that's everyone from our free agent class that we targeted signed to a contract, so great result there. And then I put Le'Veon Bell on the trade block. I wasn't sure what his production was going to be like this year or if he was going to be able to stay healthy. So I took a serious look at some trade offers here, but ultimately decided not to trade him just because I'm thinking a better offensive line in front of him will go a long way in helping him reclaim the production he used to have. And we have other opportunities to trade him later. So free agency is over with for now. Free, uh, Chris Jones goes to the Chargers. Kareem Hunt, we'll see him twice a year with the Patriots. And uh, Mackenzie Alexander remains a Bengal. There weren't a lot of big, big names in this uh, free agent pool, which is a little bit disappointing. In particular, the offensive line was not... Uh, th there weren't any good offensive linemen hitting the market. So if we're going to have to improve this offensive line, it's going to have to be through the draft and through developing our own players. The Patriots also signed DeMont Harrison, so he's going to feast on Connor McGovern or whoever is starting at center for us next year. But with free agency out of the way, it's time to look ahead to the draft. This is what our roster looks like right now. Eric Armstead is already our second best player behind Le'Veon Bell. I can't wait to see the impact he has on this defense. He's going to be a disruptive force on the defensive line for sure. And it didn't escape my attention. We only have two halfbacks on the roster. Usually they're a dime a dozen, but with Le'Veon Bell's future uncertain, trying to find a starting halfback might be something I want to take a look at. As for wide receiver, we have a lot of them on the roster. I think we had 9 or 10 at one point. I cut a couple of guys, but there's going to be a lot of competition for that wide receiver 3 position. Kaderil Hodge is my favorite to win it right now. I like what he brings to the team. But Josh Doxson, Denzel Mims, and company might also get their chances. This is what we have for draft picks this year. We obviously picked number 1 overall, but we have 3 third round picks thanks to earlier trades. So we have the capital to be aggressive in this draft if we want to. So let's get on to the draft, everybody. We picked number one overall, and it wasn't a, an easy decision here, who to pick at number one. So I decided to take a look at the trade options and see, because number one pick is usually pretty competitive, and I was floored by these offers. Wow. Los Angeles giving up a future first and a current second to move up three spots. Buffalo, who I'm not going to trade with, giving up a future first as well and a future second. But Oakland, three first round picks to move up five positions. I spent probably about 15 minutes trying to figure out what would be the right move. On one hand, there were three guys on my short list that I wanted to take early on in this draft and that I knew wouldn't be available if we traded really far back. And I expected them all to go in the top five. So dropping back to number six wasn't ideal. However, three first round picks and just about guaranteed talent still at number six 
this is a franchise altering trade that could set up us up really well in the future. We'd have four first round picks over the next two years as opposed to two. And with the direction Oakland is going, it's likely that those will be decent value picks. We'd have round one pick six this year and as well as round one pick 28 this year. So we'd have another chance to add talent at the bottom half of the first round, which is really enticing because there's a lot of depth in this draft class. But dropping back five slots meant that I was unlikely to get my any of my top three, which were Hakiba, the quarterback, Mass Johnson, the left end, or James Delgado. And really it was top two because with the signing of Eric Armstead, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to double up on left end when you already have Quinn and Williams on the roster. So then my chances of getting those players drop drastically. So I spent a lot of time deliberating over this. I thought about taking Los Angeles up on their offer, but three firsts is almost too much to refuse. So I decided to, after a lot of deliberation, to just cross my fingers and accept Oakland's trade. There was so much future benefit from this, and knowing that we weren't one piece away from contending made me decide to pull the trigger on that trade. So with the first overall pick in the draft, the Raiders take Mass Johnson. So there's one of my three players off the board. And I was kind of expecting the Vikings to take Hakiba. Cousins is getting older and he's not that good anymore. But they go cornerback. Mike Zimmer going cornerback in the first round. I should have seen that coming. So there was a first surprise. I was expecting James Delgado to go to the Broncos at number three. Because he'd be a great fit in their 3-4 scheme. They go middle linebacker Fred Griffin. And suddenly it's the Rams on the board who have a 4-3. I was really surprised by the Broncos pick. The Rams go Luke Beal, who's a cornerback out of Pittsburgh. And now I'm guaranteed to get either Hakiba or Delgado, regardless of who the Dolphins pick. And they take Jackie Whittle. So not only did one of my top three, two of my top three, slide to number six, we now have a choice. And... This was kind of hard, but I decided to go with Delgado just because I wanted more pass rush on this team. I don't think a quarterback is the right pick. And James Delgado, 79 overall. He only has normal development, but he's going to be a day one starter. Look at this skill set. 77 block shedding, 90 finesse moves. He's got 88 pursuit, 87 hit power. He's going to be a game changer on this defense. So now, it was all about waiting and seeing how far Hakiba would fall. Because there aren't a whole lot of quarterback needy teams in this draft. We are one of the few teams that don't have a good quarterback or a young quarterback that we feel confident in building around. I wasn't sure, though, if some franchises like the Falcons, who have an aging quarterback, might try and pick the successor. But they go Asher Mendenhall to try and protect Matt Ryan. The Eagles are good with Carson Wentz. And I was taking a look at this draft board. Knowing that Hikiba was one of the better quarterbacks out there, at least my favorite quarterback on the board. And wondering if he would slip to us at pick 28. Dre Hightower goes to Washington. The Titans have Ryan's Hannah Hill. I wasn't sure about the Buccaneers because they've got an aging Tom Brady who did not retire, though. But would they pick up his successor here in the draft? I thought about trading up. I really did. But as the picks kept coming... And Hakiba did not go to any of the teams here. I started wondering if it would be worth waiting, saving our draft capital for later on in the draft and hoping that Hakiba falls to us. What about Jacksonville? They've got Gardner Minshew. They go Keon Arrington from Nebraska. And then it's the Patriots on the board. They go Zach Boggs. And suddenly this is looking, we're at round one pick 20. 
This is looking a lot more like Hakiba might fall. And instead, he goes to the Indianapolis Colts, who find a successor to Philip Rivers, who's still on the roster, by the way. That's what surprised me. They had Jacoby Brissett and Philip Rivers, and they take Madison Hakiba. So that was a big disappointment of the draft, was missing out on Madison Hakiba. But we've got another pick coming up and just a couple of selections here, so there's no time to mope over that. There's going to be talent when we're on the board next. The Browns go Richard Blade from Oklahoma State. Just three more picks before we are up next. Tracy Hankins to the 49ers. The Chargers go right outside linebacker Corey Carrier. He was James Delgado's roommate at TCU. And the Chiefs, final pick before us goes Stefan Bledsoe, the hard-hitting strong safety out of Miami. So now we're back on the clock. This is the first round pick that we got in the trade from the Raiders, or one of them. And the second best quarterback on the board is Sergio Shelton. He's got mid-first round talent, but he didn't blow me away with his combine. And I wasn't really ready to bring in another quarterback in this point in the draft. Shelton was good, and he's probably more of a day one starter, but I had my eyes on another quarterback later on and deliberated a while before going with Kel Kohler, the middle linebacker out of Florida, to try and replace Avery Williamson. Kohler has excellent range, he's a freak of an athlete, and he's got hidden developments. It says it's a reach, but he's ranked number 30 in two talent. We're picking him at number 28, so that's not too much of a reach. He's got excellent speed and decent zone coverage, and most surprisingly, he's got some good pass rush moves, 75 finesse and 75 power moves, meaning that he might see some time on the outside. In the top of the second round, Shelton is still on the board, but I'm looking at running back here. I want, it didn't really feel like a huge position of need, and I had a hard time justifying the selection, but I decided to go with Willie Sparks, and he ends up being number six in true talent, with hidden development, 90 speed, 88 break tackle, 86 stiff arm, and good elusiveness. He's a three down back to potentially replace Le'Veon Bell. Dolphins take Jamal Owens, then Sergio Shelton goes to the Bears. And with Shelton off the board, I decided to try and make a trade because I didn't want to see another quarterback that I wanted get selected before it was, we were on the board. So I tried putting together a couple of offers to the Giants, and two-thirds this year, as well as Henry Anderson, is enough to get their second-round pick. So we move up a about 30 slots and take the athletic quarterback LaMarcus Albert out of Miami. I have no idea what we're getting here. We have no idea what his accuracies are as a quarterback. He's likely going to be a project, but with Sam Darnold probably getting another year or so to try and figure out this offense, I felt okay taking a swing at LaMarcus Albert. And they're calling it a reach, again, only by two slots. He's got hidden development, 71 overall. And the accuracy isn't great. That needs, that's going to need some work. How fast is he? He's got 95 speed. He kind of reminds me of Lamar Jackson. He's definitely more of a runner than a passer at this point. And he needs a lot of development, but... We have a potential project to work on. In the third round, we have one third round pick remaining. It's time to look at the offensive line. And Leroy Grant was at the top of my board. He's got hidden development. Uh, the pass protector archetype isn't great at left guard, but he's a really good pass protector. Um, so he might see time at left tackle for us. So it'd be interesting to see what he can bring to our offensive line. There's been a lot of underwhelming fixes at this point so far. So it's more about finding players that have the skills you're looking for as opposed to finding a game-altering player. 
I went back to defense in the fourth round. I'm taking a look at Stephen Donnelly here, knowing that Bradley McDougal is getting older. And liking his combination of hit power, pursuit, and zone coverage, meaning he might be able to help in both the run and the pass game. So round four, pick one, it's a little bit of a reach again. 65 overall, normal development, but he's pretty well balanced in what he can do. He just needs some time adjusting to the speed of the NFL game. 92 hit power uh, and 85 speed. In the fifth round, we decided to go back to the offensive line. There are a lot of offensive linemen here that I liked. Freddie Calvin was one of them. He's another pass protector kind of a guy. A little bit of better run blocker, but needs some work there too. But he's fairly strong and will get an opportunity to compete for snaps on our offensive line. We're kind of going quality or quantity over quality right now. As we dip back into the offensive line again here in the sixth round, Chris Lyon was the fastest right guard in the draft. He's got the power archetype and decent but below average numbers across the board. Another guard that needs run blocking work. So without us really finding a dominant run blocker, I decided to look at fullback and selected Keenan Culver in the seventh round to try and bring a little bit more uh, power to this running offense. And with our final, or sorry, we got two more picks here. We had two sixth round picks. We take another left guard, Chandler Herbert, who again has is better at pass blocking than run blocking. So a lot of guards with similar archetypes. We take speedy wideout Harvey Addison to return kicks for us with our final pick in the draft. This wasn't a bad draft. I definitely like the first half better than the second half. But we have some players to build around. Zach Boggs was New England's first round pick. He's a good run blocking tight end with decent hands. He's not going to stretch the field, but he's going to be a reliable target for them with some work here. He's got hidden dev, so good for them. The Bills took uh, Terrence Knowles with their first round pick. And Victor Booty, who I think has the best name in this draft class, he's got good speed, good size, and decent hands. The rut running needs some work. Jackie Riddle to the Dolphins. We'll see him twice a year, and he's a stud of a left tackle. Would love to have had him. And Mass Johnson went first overall to the Raiders. Hidden development, 20 years old. And he's just a monster. 86 strength, 82 speed, 86 block shedding, 87 finesse moves. He could literally be the next Aaron Donald. That's what he reminds me of. He's amazing. Fred Griffin was also 79 overall, 84 speed, great hit power, good awareness, and good zone coverage. Well, he can do it all in a 3-4 scheme. Excellent selection by the Broncos. He's going to make a difference there at day one. And, of course, Madison Hakiba, the quarterback we missed out on, has hidden developments. 96 throw power accuracy is good across the board. He's good under pressure. He's good on the run. This could have turned our franchise around. I'm kicking myself for not trading up. Donald's okay, and I'm excited for what LaMarcus Albert brings to the uh, to the team in a couple years. But Hakiba is your premier talent at quarterback in this draft, and he wearing Andrew Luck's 11. Sergio Shelton also wasn't bad. He's a little bit better in the short to intermediate range. But he's another really solid quarterback that we missed out on taking. So time will tell if it was a mistake to pass on those two quarterbacks or not be more aggressive in selecting them. We'll see Lenzel Bowers in week one. He's teamed up with De or DeAndre Hopkins and Kyler Murray in Arizona. And he is really solid as well, 76 overall. They also took Antoine Windsor who also has hidden development. It was a good draft for the Cardinals. And he can uh, rush the passer and stop the run. So really solid picks there. So after the draft, this is what our roster looks like. I was pleased with the selection of Willie Sparks because it'll give us another option behind Le'Veon Bell. And he's faster than both of the other uh, running backs on the roster. 
We have a lot of wide receivers still. The preseason is going to be interesting for them as they try and distinguish themselves. At tight end, we only have two right now, so I'll probably look to add a third, more of a blocking tight end. Left tackle, Freddie Calvin bounces outside. Mikovic stays at left guard. Hebert goes to center. Lyon stays at right guard. And Leroy Grant swings over to right tackle. So plenty of new faces on the offensive line. So that even though none of them were excellent selections, I'm still interested in seeing what they can do for the team and if they're better than the stopgap solutions we had last year. On the defensive side of the ball, I'm so excited for Quinion Williams, Eric Armstead, and James Delgado to team up. That's three quarters of a really good pass rush right there. And I think Cal Kohler is going to get a lot of snaps at that second middle linebacker position. He's got the range that Patrick Onmasor doesn't. And he's younger, so we can build around him too. Jordan Jenkins is still a right outside linebacker, but I wouldn't be opposed to bringing in some competition for him. The secondary is largely unchanged. Levi Wallace is our one signing, but we'll be returning most of the secondary from last year. Marcus May obviously still on the team. Bradley McDougald. I'm hoping the secondary will improve just by virtue of having a better pass rush this year. So, After the stream ended, I hit the practice field for about 20 minutes just to get a sense for the new players that we had on our team and see some of those offensive playmakers. Sam Darnold obviously had a really rough season last year. He threw 25 interceptions and only 17 touchdowns. He was sacked almost 60 times and just generally had a rough season. But with a retooled offensive line and three solid wide receivers to throw to, he was looking really good and very comfortable at every level of the field here in practice. His throws were on target. I think he only missed one. And regardless of whether or not he was under pressure or with a clean pocket, he was making big plays. I didn't try him outside of the pocket on the move too much, but he didn't have to. People were getting open and he was making some beautiful throws with pressure in his face like this one to Jameson Crowder. One more Sam Donald highlight, four verts against cover two. He's going to target Keeland Hodge here. Again, with pressure incoming, a beautiful throw down the right sideline for a score. Then it was time to take a look at rookie quarterback LaMarcus Albert. We picked him in the second round. He's got blazing speed. He can really extend plays. However, at this point, he's not a very polished passer, so it'll be a couple years before he's ready to really take on a starting role in the NFL. A lot of the throws I tried to make with him were kind of playmaker throws on the run, maybe under pressure trying to extend plays, but even when his feet were set, the accuracy just wasn't there on a consistent basis. He had trouble attacking downfield, and even his short and intermediate throws weren't always a guaranteed thing. So no quarterback controversy this year. It's Sam Donald's offense to run and he's going to get it the whole way unless he gets hurt or in garbage time we're going to see Sam Donald and of Marcus Albert helming this offense. I don't think it's even a competition at this point. Certainly something a question for a year from now as Albert will have a year to learn and develop and grow. He's going to be one of our focus players all year. He'll get extra experience and practice so as we try to develop him into more of a passer as Denzel Mims is one of the best catches all day, just going up and bringing that one down. That was a nice grab. But for now, it's going to be Sam Donald's offense. And I think that's honestly to our gain. Not having the question of which quarterback is going to run the offense, because they both bring very different things right now, uh, is going to be helpful for the team. And we can play with some consistency under center. Donald started all 16 games last year. He was very durable. So I'm expecting he'll get to play the majority of the team's snaps this year. Anyway, what else is there to say about LaMarcus Albert? Yeah, his deep accuracy was just not good. That's his w biggest weakness, but his speed is as advertised. Look at that. It's right through the hole, 15 yards right there. Here's another read option where he makes a correct call to hold on to it because the running back wasn't going anywhere, and he's able to pick up about seven yards after getting around the outside. He was the most effective when he was able to tuck and run, and here, getting a couple blocks upfield, that's touchdown. 
So perhaps a foretaste of things to come as we also look at Willie Sparks. I like what he brought to the practice field. He's faster than Le'Veon Bell. Here he gets a good block from fellow rookie Keelan Culver. But he was electrifying in a lot of different areas. Here's a nice run off tackle. He's got good speed and pretty good ball carrier moves as well. So, and his cuts. Look at this cut to the left. And then turning it upfield. That's a nice, that's a nice gain, and it has me excited for life after Le'Veon Bell. I don't know if we're going to have Le'Veon Bell by the end of this season. He's getting older, and he had some injury issues last year. So if he gets off to a rough start, we might look to trade him for some draft capital. Because Sparks can also contribute in the pass game, too. James Delgado was the first pick of the new era. We traded back and we're still able to land him. And I like what he brings to our defense. Here he is dropping back in coverage and making the stop behind the line of scrimmage against Willie Sparks. And he was pretty active in the pass game as well in terms of rushing the passer. Here he is getting around the right tackle and forcing an incomplete pass. Jameson Crowder. Well, he's in mid-season form already. Take a look at these grabs. He was just making ridiculous catches all game. Here's one over the middle with a man draped all over him. He hauls it in with one hand. <laughs> he's ready to go. And this time he's working down the middle of the field in between five defenders. That was an excellent catch on a ball that could have been thrown a little bit better. Eric Armstead was our prize free agent acquisition. He's lining up on the left side of your screen here. And the speed rush getting to Darnold. He'd do the same thing against LaMarcus Albert a little bit later. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And alongside Quinian Williams and James Delgado, I can't wait to see what our pass rush does. This year's schedule will really test how far we've come as a team from last year. It's a tough one. We get the AFC West, which includes the Chiefs as well as the NFC West, which is widely regarded as the best division in football. So we got our work cut out for us here in year two, but I'm really excited to see where this team has grown from last year, as well as to see how our new playmakers on both sides of the ball fit into the equation. I'll be working on the preseason highlight video here. It's going to take me a few days to get that one out. But thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Have a good one, everybody.